Hi, and welcome to the 69th episode of Keen Minds. I'm Jen, a.k.a. Takata Cycle. And I'm, and I'm, oh my God. (laughs) See, just like Red, I'm having an identity crisis. Who am I here? I don't know who you are. I don't know. Well, I don't remember. I've been Tessa for six years now, (laughs) you know, five years. So my alter ego has uh, got a, a different name, yet my own, not completely, but my own, not my own. Uh, so just I'm like red, like red. So I'm Tessa, becoming and, uh, who you really are. <laughs> exactly. I yeah. I gotta say I feel red. I know what he's talking about. There's a t- there was always a Tessa inside me. Well, we're going over the first and second episodes of season six. It was Doctor Hans Kohler and the Corsican. That's number thirty three and number twenty. And. That was I a love cra- it. It was a crazy start. <laughs> I know. It was it was less bangy that that season 5. Um because I mean that that road trip and, and and the whole thing was very light and very kind of like crazy. It was almost like a being a, an affair. Remind me like fairgrounds and you know funnily enough they were in a fairgrounds on the first one. Well, I had heard that um, that they actually reshot the opening scene, the bank robbing scene. I very much enjoyed the bank robbing scene. I was very good. I said that I was not going to watch the, like, I don't remember the how first many. five minutes. Yeah, yeah, five minutes, you know, because every year I tell myself that and then I break. I didn't break this year. I was like, I want to watch everything fresh. I want to give it the best shot I possibly can. And I'm just going to go into it hoping to enjoy the season. And that's what I did. I very much enjoyed the bank scene. I I do think that the second episode felt much more like a season opener than the first episode. I I enjoyed the second one much more than the first. The first felt more like a setup. I mean, honest, honestly, if I if I if it had been me doing the series, I would have had 522 be the season opener. I would have, but you couldn't leave people for nine months not knowing what the bones were after you've been dragging them for an entire season, the changing bones. Yeah, I, I think you would have lost <clears throat> more people than, than you know, statistically. I would have lost leave. my mind. I mean, they would have to go <laughs> help me find it somewhere. Um, but uh, just, it just, just send the Johns the psychiatric pill. It's okay. Yeah, <laughs> just trying to survive this. Like we said on the wish list, just trying to survive this. <laughs> So it, I, I thought it was a good, good season opener, very different. It felt, um, if, we, if we talk about how, you know, we started with the season one, it always had this like kind of darkish comic book aesthetics. Um, it's only when we hit season, when we hit season two and then three, four, five, that has got, more and more apparent that we're that we're going there and this one felt different it felt like suddenly everything was like moving and I liked it it was I I thought it was intriguing it was it wasn't as bangy as before as others but it was certainly very intriguing I think that honestly it felt like both episodes could have been it was it was too much for one episode but almost too little you you could tell at some points they were stretching a little bit to you know elongate the episode and did you know when i found that interesting i'd have to go back and find the exact parts but there were a few moments i was like well this scene's taking a while okay um the uh the one that comes off the top of my head that that sparked the idea during the rewatch today was in the second one where he was going after the un courier and they're sitting in the car, and I realized just how long that scene was actually taking. And, I mean, and some of that's just me trying to find ways in my own writing to shorten scenes and keep them, you know, cut short and punchy and all of that. And and so, like, to sit there and watch that, it may just be the fact that they're in season six and they can do that because, you know, hey, people already enjoy the show. You know, they're not having to... To win but any that, points right there, but it, it wasn't that long, but it was intersected with other scenes. Uh, which no, I no, think not that one. Uh, no, when he was sitting there in the car with him, not yeah. not when he was walking yeah. in. No, it was when he was sitting there in the car with him. It was just it felt so long. It, that, I, that did feel a little long. I, I think there were just certain points where they really could have tightened it up. But saying that, unless they had gotten, you know, a 
like a 70 minute slot or sure, you know, a 90 minute slot, you know, so, something, you know, different than, than TV gives. I mean, like they wouldn't have gotten it is the point. <laughs> um, you know, if they, if their options were one, one episode or two episodes with this, like, I mean, it was too much information for one episode. So I felt like they had to kind of stretch some yeah. at certain yeah, points, it, it, but it really was her. supposed to be one episode. Um, I, I don't think so. It would have been way too much. It would have felt so no, dense. No, no. I, I meant, I meant that they're supposed to go hand in hand together. Um, oh, I yeah. mean, it, it like was be, 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 be shown together. Like exactly. uh, the second night I watched both of them, uh, one, mm -hmm. one right after the other, the way they were aired. And that was a much stronger way of watching them. Yeah. I imagine so. I haven't watched them back to back yet, but, uh, well, I mean, I sort of did cause I, I did the rewatch for uh, one right before mm -hmm. watching two. So, yeah. So let's talk, and how about, um, should we start with the characters? Yeah, um, let's jump into Samar first, because that was, that was an interesting bit. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot. Uh, Samar and Aram didn't have huge parts in him, but we did get that interesting scene with Samar coming into it, with her getting back into the field, and so being you know, cleared for field duty and this and that. She definitely swallowed hard when the doctor asked. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, there was no And mistaking. then there was when he says congratulations and, and she's like, what? So I thought I thought that scene was very interesting and I remember one of your um, fan fictions and you know my feelings, you know where I think this is going. I think we might have an issue with memory. Oh, well, I think that's a Coming given. Up. I mean, because they, they, they said, you know, any problems with memory? And she's going, no, of course not. And you're going, yes, Samar, you're having memory problems. We, we can tell. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was very clearly written and acted. And, I mean, we were supposed to know for sure she's having some issues. We just don't know what kind and the depth of it yet. She also didn't seem the same. Um, it's common with people who have a um a near death experience of being in a coma who have um that they're not the same and we've seen it with Liz we've seen how I mean she's always she was never like the light of the uh of the universe but she certainly wasn't this dark well I mean there there is that the fact that she was unconscious and missed 10 months of her life that's massive but I mean, on top of losing 10 years, 10 years, 10 months of her life, she woke up, she had missed that time with her daughter. And at that age, that's a huge growth. She had lost her husband. She, everybody else had already, you know, as much as they would mourn him, had already basically had the, the funeral and he'd been buried for 10 months. And she wakes up and finds out like it just happened. And yet the entire world has moved on from that. And she suddenly asked to, you know, move along with it. And... Mm -hmm. And she's just at the first. So she wakes up, loses 10 months, loses her husband and doesn't have any idea how to deal with her daughter at that point all at once. It was such I mean, yeah. it would drive anybody a little crazy. And so, like, I I'm giving Liz a little bit of leeway. <laughs> on some uh, and, of and, stuff. And, and I'll go right ahead and said it and say it here. I was saving it for the podcast. I honestly think this is how they're going to bring Tom. Um, this is how they're going to explain Tom, um, being away for all this time. I think that he, I, I had a very interesting, uh, little, uh, uh submission as uh, somebody uh, urging me to look at masks in, um, in Dr. In, uh, Sinclair. And yes, I did find a very interesting mask, one mask that could be Tom's. Um, they're very hard to see because once you put, you know, you take out the, the coloring and all that, the features are, you know, they're kind of weird, you know, but I kind of took a picture. I, I took a, a, an image of Tom and an image of the mask and I superimposed them. And I gotta say that could certainly be Tom and that's will be how they fake the death by having a mask. I mean, you, you did. Body. You did have redemption as well, in which they had people that went through altering surgeries. You had this, which was an altering surgery. I mean, so it's not like doppelgangers and a switching up of faces has been would be new to, to uh, Blacklist. Well, this would be just using a face mask on a body. Yeah. 
I mean, you're, how would you recognize somebody because about the face looks like that? And on a dead body, you don't even have to worry about the body being that because you're not going to be looking at the body. You're going to be looking at the face. Yeah. And a dead face doesn't look quite like a live face. So you always be like, oh. I always thought it was very weird that it was um, Cooper identifying him. And, you know, everything about that death had been, I know that it had to happen, but I always felt there is, I know that Tom is somewhere alive. I think I know that Tom is somewhere alive. I just don't know how they're going to do this time that has passed and Tom is not around. And when they said those memory problems, I said, oh, look, the kind of psycho has this, the idea. He just <laughs> lost my, his memory. It's my fic. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, I don't. I don't think that that's something they would do in canon just because I think that it would be too much. And, like, if Ryan weren't the star on New Amsterdam, then sure, absolutely, that'd be awesome. I would love for them to do that. I think it'd be a great storyline. But, you know, the actor is the head character on New Amsterdam. Well, he only has to appear in the last two episodes. Well, that's what I'm saying. If it's a memory thing, um, if they're resolving the memory thing, that's going to take longer than the two episodes. But that's that's my idea, is that... I. I, I am trying not to get my hopes they up because could, they could have him coming back from a trek in Himalayas, and then suddenly, when I was in the in the peak of this, I remember who I was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they could. Um, but that's that's the only way like they it. that's the only way they could pull it off is to have him come back in the last episode or two and and to wrap. I could totally see him. Ryan's perfectly capable of doing that. Everything shot in New York. It's all NBC. NBC owns 50% of Blacklist now. They own 100% of New Amsterdam. I mean, it's doable. It's absolutely doable. Just if, send just send Max for vacation. Uh, yeah, but it's okay. Max Max needs a vacation. The man just collapsed at the end of the fall finale. So let him go to the hospital and get better. <laughs> you know? Um but uh yeah, anyway, it's it's possible. We talked about that on the wish list. It's it's a possibility. Um, but back to Samar. Um mm -hmm. I mean it's yeah, there were some definitely de sorry, definite differences with her. And she was much more subdued, um, I think. And what was interesting was for the fact that they have acknowledged that everybody seems to know that Samara and Aram are engaged now. Samara and Aram didn't talk about it. I mean, there well, was no... It, well, yeah, but th that's your shit, Berhard. I was perfectly fine with that. I mean, In I fact, but thank you, spare me. No, I don't think so. That was more of a, this is a situation... I mean, and it may just be they didn't feel like they had time, but like I said, I felt like they stretched in other places. So, I don't know. It struck me funny. It may be nothing, though. Yeah, to me, I feel like, uh, thank you, thank you so much for sparing me, um, much appreciated. <laughs> I know I'm a heartless non-shipper, but that's who I am. <laughs> um, really, there wasn't much for a ROM. I mean, like, the only thing that I, stood I out, do, yeah. the only thing that stood out for me was that fantastic line of being, uh, what was it, distinctly above average? Yes. <laughs> I loved that. No, I think he was funny as usual, but he was not an episode center in him. I did like that he was like really in my, of all the ones that we saw a reaction to to Reddington being taken and arrested. Samar, uh, we we didn't see Samar. Wrestlers definitely seemed happy about it, um, and um, and of the task force, Cooper was like really upset and he you know he risked a lot to try to save him and convince mm -hmm. that woman who looks yeah she looks um let's say it um very very driven yes uh holt i think was her caring. name oh uh, that's good. Yeah. I, th I think very it was uncaring oh it should I, be I didn't interesting for the character yeah I she didn't care much for the character because she seemed like to have like zero emotion uh, uh, towards, you know, learning this. I, I think she reminds me of a politician, honestly. I mean, and she is. She's I mean, she's in the Justice Department right now, but she's aiming for a political role. I mean, so, I mean, any bite she has to mow over in her way, she's going to do it. Yeah, and I can see somebody point. killing her like they killed Tom Connolly. Mm -hmm. You know, that was another politician. Yeah, I mean, it's. 
there, there was something there was something un, unappealing about the way she went about it. The fact that she didn't even flinch or say, "Boy, yeah, oh wow, you captured this." I mean, those were built cases that yeah. came out of the blue. That 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 most of them had headlines that imply thousands of possible casualties. And I would just like to say in there. That was such, uh, I made this comment, I, I did a little write-up last night um, on, uh, we're recording this on Saturday, I don't know when it'll get out for, you know, on the air, but um, I when, when the second episode aired, I did a write-up of first reactions to it, and one of the, the things that I mentioned on it was that I hope future shows will take how they handled... I mean, because they've got five previous seasons of stuff that's happening that's all starting to come to head in season six. And, I mean, granted, they're not going to do a flashback episode, first or second episode in, but I despise flashback episodes. Loathe them to the deepest core of my body. Hate them so much. But every show on the air needs to take a note on how the Johns wrote, wrote in and wove together everything that was ne- necessary for this. You had um, Jennifer and Liz's conversation at the beginning where Liz is explaining to her and working through that, you know, the various, you know, the high points because there were so many details and the, the casual audience is not going to remember the things that you remember, that I remember, that, you know, everybody listening here is going to remember they're just not going to. And so being able to gloss that over in an organic way, discussing it with Jennifer to catch her up because she's new to so much of this. And then I loved the way and that and that was for more of the casual audience. But then you have with Cooper and Holt where he's showing her the the uh, board of the board. pictures that you were just talking about. That's for those that that pay closer attention to the show that know. And it was such a great way. Cause you had blacklisters. They weren't just recent ones. I saw Gina on there. I saw, um, Berlin, uh, what's his, Gary Braxton. Uh, what's his name? The, um, Gregory DeVry was on there. I mean, there, there were so many from over the years from all seasons. And it was such a great way to give a visual to remind us of all of that. And so I I really enjoyed that. That was a very nice little mm. little bit. So I don't think we have anything else on on Aram and Samar. Should we move to wrestler? Um, or okay, was there anything Cooper? else with Cooper? Yes, I think that then there was Cooper was very interesting. Well, let's go into Cooper. I thought that Cooper was very interesting for a couple of reasons. Some of them, the casual audience would not even remember. But that picture that Red delivered um, back to the bank manager, um, Red never took that in Grace and Blaze. That was left. That's one of the ones that Grace and Blaze stole. He took up the Picasso that was put in the backseat of his car, but not the Van Gogh. And that actually um, m- must have been in what the FBI recovered. So if Red I don't remember had, him having that, no, I'll have to go back. It is um, it is mentioned. It's not. It's never oh. been shown. It was mentioned as being stolen from by uh, from Cairo. And the fact that he has it now means that um, Cooper gave it to him. There's no other way. He didn't get out of there. He had the Picasso in the backseat of the car, and he had the 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 penny and the flash drive. Hmm. So unless the flash drive contained information as to how to get to the present owner of that, but I don't think that Grayson Blaze would sell them. He would just steal them for himself. But there was something that that made me think about that because. Um, certainly Red did not rob that bank to get that painting back. He put it back there just so that the bank manager will shut up about his, um, uh, involvement in this, in the matter. Cause I say, of course you don't, you didn't know that you were, that you had a stolen property in your bank. Um, so that was a very clear threat and the bank manager, of course, of course. And there he goes. He has a very good reason for be returning that and forget about this. So that was, that was an interesting thing. Uh, that I thought about Cooper, that uh, I wonder if he's involved. His warnings to Liz were also very interesting. What did you think about those? I 
I think that they're all sort of looking at, well, I mean, not all of them, especially Cooper and, and Wrestler, looking at the weight that's bearing down on Liz. And they're probably seeing changes in her, like we were discussing earlier. And I think Cooper was offering her an out. Mm-hmm. That, you and know, that like, is, this, this is good. We are doing a lot of good. I'm game for continuing. But if it's going to cost you your soul, this is the time, you know, this is the time to bow out. This is when we do it. Mm. Yeah, I thought it was very interesting, uh, you know, him being, saying that. And at the same time, in the last uh, in the last season, I remember, he was like, it's enough about secrets. It's time those secrets end. Um, and, and they all seem to know that there was a skeleton. And Cooper, that means that probably Cooper know who the skeleton is. And... Uh, I think that there is there is being a very interesting momentum going on of people uh, kind of reaching a point where they are sick and tired of the secrets and what's happening to to Liz. Yeah. Well, I mean, you even had Cooper say, you know, she called him sir, and he goes, I think we've been through enough. You can call me Harold. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that's th – there's always been a bit of a, a paternal sort of – Mm-hmm relationship there and I, I think it's just a continuation thereof I think he's a little protective of her by a little I mean a lot and I mean mm -hmm. she has been through hell and back and back mm -hmm. and back <laughs> I mean yeah, and I, I found it interesting that he said Harold sir so it, it yeah. was like you know she was putting a distance there well I you know some of that's just the fact that she works in the FBI and he is sir you don't call someone yeah. by their first you don't call your superior officer by their first name yeah but so, but it was interesting that she chose to say the harold and the sir that to me have, that was like i i yeah. took that more as automatic like you know it just she was uncomfortable calling him harold because <laughs> it was just mm -hmm. that's not what you do uh, it's kind um, of yeah i don't know it felt to me that there was a you know what i'm doing here is bad and 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 it might have been. It might have been. That's just not how I took it. Yeah. All right. So should we go into wrestler? Okay. I have two points for wrestler. Um, the swig. Okay. The no, swig. I have three points for wrestler. I love the, the swig, swig has to take it. That was a very good one. Excellent timing. Oh, it was so great. And so I'm just going, buddy, you deserve that. After this, this is the second time he's done this with, with alcohol. It, Ooh, when he it. took the bottle from from Red, that's a parallel, guys. The parallel queens are back. Um, I'm going to make a gift set. <laughs> and then uh, this time when he just takes it from uh, from uh, from Rudiger. I was, it was so good to see Rudiger back. This is the third time he's been on the show. It is, and I love him. He's so, I love your weird little Fourth German time. man. Uh, no, it's Fourth my third. Time. He was no, he was in Gina Sanitaco. That's uh -huh. when we were introduced to him. Then he was in Rehab. 109. In 109, he's one of the guests in the in the tavern when wrestler come to pick up he uh, Red. I I forgotten about that. You're right though. And then he is in rehab <laughs> after he crashes daughter's <laughs> didn't, car. Which didn't stick. <laughs> nope. And then now he's out there making bombs and drunk as a skunk. <laughs> I loved that, but the gin and tonics what gives me the steady hands. <laughs> oh, I love Rudiger. I was I was very happy to see him. I thought that Liz had come across him, but I was wrong. It was um she she flew. I think they flew to Germany wrestler. for someone. Yeah, wrestlers come wrestler. across him. Um, and Liz flew to I think Germany to meet someone else. But it was it was a very similar setup to the. Uh, to no, not to Germany. She flew uh, to meet Dr. Sanders. Dr. Sanders in the psychiatric... Um, yeah, that was it. Because yeah. it just... My brain was, was thinking about the rehab and the psychiatric ward. And for some reason, it got the, the blacklister switched. In, and yeah. so I'm sitting there going, she should know him. What's happening here? And then finally, it clicked. So, yeah, yes, no. the swig was amazing. That that should be our first note. <laughs> it was fantastic. But um, yeah. what did you think about the olive branch that that wrestler extended to Liz at the beginning of the episode when he uh, they get out and he says, you know, I, I how can you be good with this? You know, I, I'm OK with you not telling me, but don't insult my intelligence by by thinking that I'm just not going to think something's going on here. You don't have to tell me, though. And I loved that, that he didn't push her to tell him. 
But regardless, he trusts her enough to be okay with it as long as she's not going to BS her way through it and pretend that. It, it was an wrong. interesting choice, you know, again, for a wrestler who uh, chose to shut uh, Liz down every single time in season ones and two when he was going through the um, through the the pill problem and all that. And he insisted and shut her up. And um, so I, I think he's, it showed he's a, been, a character growth. Oh, definitely. I mean, he's been through his own personal hell with... Um, I'm blanking on his name. I can picture him. Um, Prescott. Prescott. Thank you. For some reason, his name escapes me every time. Um, but he, he, went, didn't, went, he didn't look like a Prescott. And that's because he wasn't a Prescott. <laughs> but, um, but, but yeah, he didn't found an identity that fit him well. <laughs> that was, uh, it was an ill-fitting shirt. It's all right. Um, but anyway, uh, but yeah, he, he went through Prescott. He went through that. And I mean, we had that whole situation with Liz joking about the body in his trunk. I got the impression she thought there was a body in his trunk. Oh, and she was just going to she was just letting it go because wrestler, if you've got a body in your trunk, man, there's a reason. And if you want my help, you're going to ask for it. If not, you know, <laughs> I'd rather not know. Let's just yeah. leave it a bit. Don't yeah. ask, don't um, tell. <laughs> the, the one thing that I found interesting, and here we go with a parallel situation. Did you notice how this is a goal back to Frederick Barnes? Remember in Frederick Barnes, Liz, Liz surrenders her gun to save the witness, the, yes. the, the, the um, officer. And mm-hmm. in this time, uh, wrestler let go of the bad guy in order to attend to the wounded yeah. man. Um, and he berated Liz to annoying. So, you know, it, he's less of a, of a boy scout. Uh, on mm-hmm. the other hand, man, you should have taken that shot and then attend to the guy that would have taken you a second. Well, he's a I mean, shot. He, he was behind the woman. I, I don't think that he had the shot was the problem, but kind of a funny little mix up. Um, cause he was taking his, his jacket off to use to staunch the blood. Mm-hmm. And then later he had his jacket on and was like, oops, <laughs> costuming. Yeah. Oh, well, well. he keeps a bunch of them in the car. There you go. He just, he keeps them. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it goes with the hair. Yep. yep. <laughs> just magically goes- appears. Yeah. Or maybe, Learning from Red keeping the is you know as Red keeps the uh, the storage units maybe he keeps them in his car he hasn't advanced to the storage unit but you know give him time there'll be a day there will yeah. um so the the last note that I had on Ress was I do you get the feeling at the end there there were a couple of things so I, I need to kind of work through this. When she's talking to Wrestler at the end, when Liz is talking to Wrestler at the end, and Aram lets them know that that Reddington's been arrested. She, I mean, obviously, because we know by the last scene that it was Liz that set him up. It wasn't just hinted to it with the call of Jennifer. It was acknowledged at the end of the episode. It mm-hmm. was Liz. But when they're sitting there and talking to Aram, she leads the conversation to make it look like wrestlers Wrestler the did. most yeah scapegoating like and then and then a little bit later when she's talking to Reddington in in jail she says um he says you know I want you to find the person who did this and she goes are you going to kill him I I am wondering and if she's going this route I'm going to be really sad I, I don't think it would be bad writing at all i think it would be very in line with what liz is capable of but it's going to make me personally as a fan very sad if she does this to him and sets him up as a scapegoat unless I, it was in liz who did and she's taking the blame and he was wrestler but but then again the only ones who were in the room when red said where they were going was liz so yeah. it has to have been liz. i i think yeah. it's liz yeah uh i thought it was it was um at that point in the show, I had this this thought, up, you know, that I believe that Red is her father. I believe Red is Reddington. has been for a long time. Not that he's his real name. He's still an imposter, but just a long time imposter. I think that up until this point, Liz had been more her father. We have seen Liz becoming her father. I think we're seeing now Liz becoming more like her mother, leaving a, a wake of of, of destroyed lives. Uh, and I think that she's becoming far more ruthless, far colder. 
than anybody that that you know that red has ever been. Because Possibly. all we've seen of Katarina, Katarina doesn't seem like a very uh, warm and fussy kind. Oh no, she seems uh, she seems ruthless, uh, uncaring, very weird in in many ways. Um, so I think that that very manipulative. Um, so I think that this is now this really going into her mother. Yeah, that's that's a good possibility. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought that the wrestler have done, you know, it's it's been an interesting arc that they created with him. Um, so I'm excited to see what comes next. Uh, he certainly um, deserves something fun for a bit because he hasn't had a little bit of fun. Oh, I know. I, I thought it was an excellent episode for him, the second episode especially. Um, I thought wrestler had, I thought Diego did an excellent job and the it was it was a very... It was a very good episode for him. As as a wrestler fan, I was very happy. <laughs> All right. Um, and that takes us to... Red and Liz and Jennifer and the and whole Dembe. lot. <laughs> yeah, and Dembe, because Dembe yeah. had very, very interesting moments there. Oh, so many. Did you kind of get the impression, the look he was giving as Red was frolicking through, <laughs> through the UN like a child, you know? excited um like the look that Dimbe was giving him reminded me of the looks that he gives him like uh when they were in the forest in i think it was the vim like yeah, that with we're Gerald done and, you, uh, yeah and, uh, you, you're you're taking it too far you you gotta take a breather take a step back you're going into crazy town and that was one but the one that impressed me the most was with uh red is talking to liz and say well you're keeping secrets and, oh. uh, and then and then uh, Red says, "Well, Demi keeps secrets from me." And Liz is like, "That's not the same." And, and you see the the look that that Dembe, uh gives Red is like, yeah, "Yeah, I told you, I told you not to." to oh, do see, this. I got the impression he was looking over, going, "Don't pull me into this. <laughs> do not pull me." I into think this. there was one of this, but I think that the, there was also. I think that Dembe has a pretty good idea who sent. Oh yeah. What, what is what is Liz doing? And it's like I hit I mean, I finally told you you were lying. I told you to tell the <laughs> truth. I told you you were not gonna get away with this. So the de- so the dumb and you keep doing it. Everybody's so, told him. <laughs> Everybody has told him, but his sham is brilliant with those moments where he doesn't say a word. It's all mm-hmm. in the eyes and the body language and he, he is incredibly talented in that. Yeah, he's done a terrific job. So that that was that was a very intriguing moment with me. And then the other one that really caught my attention, and I thought about that mildly therapeutic therapeutic um, moment when Liz slams Red into the bookcase. Mildly, is when Red gets arrested. Yeah, when Red gets arrested and he's hanging back. He there was time for him to uh, intervene and get Red out. And I yeah. had a feeling that he just said, "You know what, Paul." You brought this on yourself. See, I'm not trying to protect you. I didn't get that at all. I got the imp- I, I saw the scene. It looked like Red was looking at him like, no. And, I mean, he would have had to have attacked a cop. And if you go back to 601, when um when he and Dembe were in the, yeah. uh, the truck, he goes, they're shooting at the cops. Oh, my gosh, these people. And, I mean, and so what was Dembe going to do? Come out in the middle of New York City and start shooting at, at the NYPD? Oh, he could have approached and, and disabled and disabled a cop with a... With a mm, uh, I don't was know. A cop and he didn't seem to know exactly what he was doing. Anyway, I thought it was weird. It, it, it may come to nothing, but in, in, in conjunction to all the other moments, he's like, I think Dembe has had it. And there, of course, there is there is a preview with a a, a, mo- a moment with Dembe in which Liz, in which he acknowledges that he knew Katerina, that he knows Katerina, and that Liz reminds him of Katerina, which is a very interesting uh, moment, and that he knows everything. So I think that that Dembe is getting to a point where he's like, "This is it, Posse. I, I, I can't go further than this in what you're doing." Well, I mean, I, you've always gotten the impression by you, I mean, like. We, you know, uh, we've always gotten the impression that Dembe is a very moral human being that, you know, I mean, while, while he will do bad things, 
Like, he, he has his set of morals, and he sticks to them. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. I could definitely see him getting to this point, and he's like, listen, Red, <laughs> you're, you're crossing my, my threshold of what I'm comfortable with. And uh, it'll be interesting seeing what happens going forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, he already told him, you know, let's, let's leave the red speaker sign. You're lying, pal. Which is, you know, technically he is not. But Dembe went past the, yeah, let's stop talking it like uh, cute speech. Let's call it what it is. For the vast majority of humanity, you're lying. Mm-hmm. So it, it was very interesting. I love the moment. Um, can now talk about Jennifer? She had the... <laughs> She had what I thought was the line of the night. Our fake father is a criminal and the real one was a snake. That was brilliant. I liked the one about, um, what was it? Was it Payback's a bitch? And now there's two of them or something like that? And she's holding uh, the bunny? Uh, yep. Uh, Payback's a bitch. And Especially when there's two of them. Two. Yeah. And, you know, we, we've talked about the two bunnies. There is, mm-hmm. That's one of the clues uh, Red talking about what's up with all these rabbits. And there's been rabbits everywhere. Last season, we, we had rabbits coming out of the woodwork uh, <laughs> of rabbit holes where we all seem to go there uh, all the time in the blacklist. It, it, was, uh, it was very interesting. I thought that they're going very much into, into all these... Um, themes again and 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 clues so very exciting yeah i do feel like this is going to be a very mythology heavy season and that that gets me very excited (laughs) you you know how i feel about mythology (laughs) now i i got also the distinct impression that liz is lying to jennifer and jennifer is lying to liz i definitely get the impression that jennifer is more then she would, I mean, when she went into the whole spiel about, oh, I, I had no, no yeah, that, that whole bit, I felt like that was incredibly, and I've seen Fiona and other things. Uh, I, I mean, we've talked about that. I saw her in Dirk Gently. I know the level she acts at. And that felt so disingenuous that it had to have been on purpose. And, and so I, I do think that she is trying to play Liz how good she will be at it is an entirely different thing because I don't, she hasn't spent five years under the master. Now, does that mean that she hasn't spent five years or more under a different master? Maybe, but not under Raymond Reddington. Not under Raymond Reddington, but, and here I go with a but, if I am right, she has, she has spent a large portion of her life with Katarina. And uh, that, that, and even if you don't believe my theory, you know, Carla was pretty damn good at it too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that, well, I don't think Carla was Katarina. I do think that she was, is, was, depending on the situation, um, very manipulative and, and very clever. Because, I mean, honestly, do you really think Raymond Reddington would be with a woman that wasn't? That was just No, I mean, he's a type of violent woman who thinks that <laughs> dead getting him arrested or nearly killed is, is a poor play. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Most people would say it's over Paul for him. It's like, should we go to your room? Yeah. I it's don't okay. know. The Tom, main... Tom likes women that shoot him and Red likes women that you know, overpower that him. him. killed. Yeah, there you go. Um, very, um, let's talk about Red and Liz. How about, no, let's just go a bit more into, into Jennifer yeah. and Liz. Let's go into that scene at the beach. Oh, that was good. I really liked that one. But my question is, good heavens, why is Liz broadcasting that to everyone that Raymond Reddington's her father? And that Raymond, and then she's a federal agent. Yeah. Well, they were getting answers from this guy pretty nicely. And then he clam up when he's heard that she's a fed. Yeah, I'm just like, that, it was... It was this back awkward. in season one. Like, she has to go through a whole period with each new person so, so that her mouth remains closed instead of <laughs> putting her foot and the other foot and part I, of the legs. I just felt like, because, I mean, I got the impression that it was very privileged knowledge to know that Red is, you know, supposedly her dad. And so, I mean... Obviously, there there's no more secrets about Katarina Rostova being her mother because it was broadcast all over, you know, 24-hour news. But mm-hmm. Reddington being her father is not something mm-hmm. that it was. And so that is 
potentially very dangerous information. I mean, if she's if she were to believe that and also believe what what Red's been telling her for years that knowing her father's identity would put her in danger, then I mean, I just I, I just look yeah. at that and go, why would you broadcast that to someone? Well, that, that's the same as when she went to Miles and said that she was a federal agent and when she opened, I mean, she spent season one and two doing this nonstop. I, I mean, even just, I mean, the federal agent isn't what I'm worried about. I mean, it was the fact that at least twice during the two episodes, she did it once at the beach. and No, then the went, beach was, was Jennifer. No. Jennifer, this uh, is my sister. Well, I mean, they the guy walks up and says, "Did one of you call saying claiming to be Raymond Reddington's kid?" And they're both like, "Yeah, that's us," they, you know. Yeah. And so, I mean, they they called him claiming to be Reddington's kid, you know. And then in in six o two, she turns they're around and walks like the, the the cop. Yeah, I'm, he's my father. And I was just like, "Why? Why would you?" Well, I mean, you're also I, putting the task force in danger because that looks like they're in collusion. Well, nobody with, knows that there is a task force. I know, but now it just—it's. Well, let me why? let me ask you. Let me tell you something about that scene. Did you find something else weird with that scene uh, with the uh, former um, sheriff? I mean, I found the whole scene strange but <laughs> i liked it but i One found it strange people saying claiming to be a kid of raymond reddington and then Fion- and then uh, jennifer says i i'm jennifer this is my sister liz and the sheriff doesn't go say wait a minute there was only one kid oh that's it's interesting i hadn't say. thought about that yeah there you go it's going back to that those mm-hmm. memories and if you really look at the bubble girl movie that's not one girl that's two you know, I, I was looking at your photos of that today, and they, it does look like two kids. Yep. I mean, one it's... very similar looking, but one slightly older than the other. They they do do some clever clever things with the camera <laughs> yeah. oh, on yeah. this show. I mean, yeah, they do amazing stuff. Uh, I mean, that, that was very clever. I had that in the back of my mind since I watched that movie, but it took me a lot of, I mean, it was learning to do GIFs and then compare them. And I'm, and I like did like measurings of things that change with kids, like smaller kids have different proportions in their mm-hmm. bodies. And when I look at that, it's like, ah, oh, boy, this is too girl. Well, I mean, the thing is, there's so much that you learn about characters, about, you know, just pick up on, on little details you never would have when you gift things because you're seeing it frame by frame. And, you will pick up on more details when you learn how to give. It's it's one of the things I enjoy about it. Yeah. Well, I, I there's also things that get lost because they're like one or two frames and then you lose them. If you don't catch them, you lose them. But certainly that was one that got me like, yay, there is two girls in there. I mean, it's very well done. There is only one moment you see both girls at the same time. But there's also the moments in which we're not seeing the movie. We're just seeing mm-hmm. uh, fa- Red's face watching the movie. So what is in the movie when we're not watching the movie yeah. is an interesting thing. Um, and and then, uh, you know, we're seeing the two kids. Then when they're in the tree me- in the tree lot, I mean, the two girls dress the same. And, and obviously, is this playing the part of one? So it's it, the whole thing is really interesting, well done. I enjoy Jennifer. I think she's going to become one of my favorite characters. Um, she there is something um, very um, devious about her that I enjoy very much because I, I think honestly, I mean, if you look at, at her character, she has to know that both Red and her mother have lied to her her entire life. Yeah. And I don't, I can't tell yet. I haven't really made up my mind yet if she's always been devious and, mali- and manipulative and such, or if finding this out has sort of cracked something in her brain. And she's like, well, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound sort of thing. And she's just going to go the whole way. And she's, because I kind of get the impression that she's newer to the manipulation you know i just yeah. the way she's going about it, it's a little clunky it's a little forced not not the acting not not anything you know i'm saying that like it's a it seems to be a choice in the acting to do that yeah the that jennifer's a little clunky in this but yeah. well, she's yeah, she's it, given it, it her all <laughs> yeah it, it comes to from 
2015. I mean, in, in, 20, in 2007, her mom sends her away saying that she is very scared that Reddington is going to find her and force her to tell her where Jennifer is. So there he goes, Jennifer on her own. She's in college. And then uh, come, you know, she doesn't hear anything for, about from her mother until we get to 2018, where it, she's moving 2017. Garvey moves her to, to uh, Maryland from Virginia. And the next thing she knows is that Frank, traces her, tells her that their mother died, and tells a story about Reddington, um, about her being kidnapped by Berlin, losing a finger, Reddington giving them new identities. And then she's like, wait a minute. It's, so my mother met Reddington, and there you are, um, and she never came back for me. So, okay, everything is good until we reach to 2007, 17, when the bones are, no, 2018, when the bones come out, and suddenly, or 19, I'm sorry, when the bones come out, and now she thinks that Reddington is not Reddington. So that means that in 2015, when her mother was recovered by Reddington, her mother knew that A, Reddington is red and is her father, or B, that her mother had lied to her her entire life. So she knows now that her mother, either red is her father, and she's just pissed and is going along with this uh, imposter or at the very least she knows her mother has lied to her and never want, and didn't want her back so I'd say that those are two sisters that are going to be they're very pissed and um, it's not I mean <laughs> yeah Pavis a bitch <laughs> especially when there's two <laughs> Oh, gosh. Yeah, I, I think Jennifer's going to be fun. Um, I don't know if if I think she's going to survive this or not. I mean, we've seen the behind-the-scenes photos of her beaten to a pulp, and we saw, um, did you see the, the previews for next week? It looks like that she's going to have been beaten pretty badly and escorted no. out. Um, and so... No, where is a... That was just on, on next week, on the blacklist, you know. Oh, uh, is, is that her? Yeah. I didn't see her. Yeah. yeah certainly looked like her um is that that scene with two women fighting no no she was being led out by by armed men out of like an apartment or something oh she's out of a building yeah um but uh i think that she will i i don't think that we're gonna see that but definitely we're gonna see some some fun things happening i'm i'm and i'm and i'm waiting to get dom involved in all this is uh, I think it's going to be a great season. So, Red and Liz. <laughs> well, did you? I have one more thing with oh. Red that doesn't involve Liz, which is: Did you notice that Reddington is recognized two times? The first one in in the bank by the robbers, and the second time mm-hmm. by the cop. Yeah, it's. I mean, he's getting recognized more. <laughs> it's getting more brazen. And uh, did you know also the robbery scene was very similar to the 322 with um, with Halcyon? With Halcyon? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I and think there that's... was also a girl being scared, and the other time was a girl being yeah. being Shot. heard. And then this time is Red worried about the the scared girl, and that time it was Tom uh, trying to save the girl. <laughs> there was also this. I mean, it it was entirely different context. But did you catch the boat comment? It would have been a nice boat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Tom, uh, oh, I didn't know Tom that. in season two, he goes, "Oh, it would have been oh, a good boat." Or, I think he, I think he actually said it would have been a nice boat. Is mm-hmm. what he tells Liz. I mean, it's entirely different context. And so it's I'm, going to be a nice boat. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah. And so, uh, I like, I, I don't know if it was meant to tie back together, but it was, you know, for I me, it was nice. I think that there are very many things that are not intentional in the writing, <laughs> I gotta say. Um, all right. Um, let's talk about. Red list and the guy who makes people into into doubles into into people that they're not. So it we know that now Red has seen two plastic surgeons, Doctor Hans Kohler and Doctor Abraham Maltz. Yeah, 
That was interesting. I mean, I I don't know a whole lot about plastic surgery. I've never had any work done personally, but um, I mean, I would think that you wouldn't. You typically stick to one person. I don't know. Well, I have I have a theory on it. Um, uh, and and first, let me take get something out of the equation. It's not that this guy made you know himself into an exact copy of 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 a specific person. He went looking for a guy who looked a lot like him and made himself yeah. into that copy. So it's not that this is not the doctor that turned uh, Katarina into red. Let's just, you know, this is a guy who makes people similar. So like redemption, they would have get somebody who looked yeah. very yeah. similar and alter here and there to create, you know, somebody who is well, unrecognizable. I mean, it, it's a, it's a thin line because I mean, you, you're going to stretch it in TV. I mean, that's just what mm-hmm. you do. I mean, the audience, there, there's going to be some, some stretch. You got to make it do. fun. Yeah. You but, make it fun. but yeah, I mean, you, you can't take someone, you know, that, you know, you know, a thin face, short person with a nose that sits really high on the face where and make it into a person with a white head, really tall yeah. and the nose that sit high on the forehead. You, no. You've got to work with what you have. Yeah. So I, I thought one of the things that I've, that I've have come to understand is what happened in the year 1990 to 1992. And I think that what happens is after the, after the fire red had, surgery to repair his burns yeah and he came out looking completely different and that's i think is when he took the apartment in bethesda uh that's when he was uh basically bill kershaw i would and assume that was an i would assume that was the first guy because he talked about you know what is he using yeah. on his skin the and, yeah. yeah the elasticity which is what burn skin mm-hmm. loses and after that, I mean, he's producing plays. That's not a guy who's being a criminal. That's a guy who's resigning that my little life in my little apartment, decrepit. It looked like Alaska, like like Liz Alaska's uh, house. Decrepit little plays with a, with a, some music and a few books and, and trying to kind of like plot along. Red Hat lost the woman he loved. He was all alone. His life was basically shattered and he was trying to put a foot in front of the other and stumble in front and stumble you know into something. And by 1992 he's trying to be the criminal the world think he was. And I think that between 1991 and 1992 he had to go back to the role of Raymond Reddington. But he didn't look like Raymond Reddington anymore. So I think that this Hans Kohler turned him back into who he was. That's it was an interesting a surgery. Thought. Yeah. So this is this is a very very interesting thing because is you cannot explain red red from 1990 to 1992. I mean, why? I mean, if he was re, if he was really all about the fulcrum, he would have been about the fulcrum from after the fire. Why two years in between? And that's what I what I analyze that, that that's what he was doing. Um, so I think that that's what this guy did. And he said that he didn't remember if he was if he was um, if he was a handsome. And I thought about the comment about the hideous fish mm-hmm. that you know if he he turned hideous, he doesn't remember who he was. You know, and he said I, I barely thought about who I was. Yeah, that was that was an interesting scene there with her reaching out for his hand. I mean, it was it was a distorted parallel of season one uh, in the Gina Zanatakos episode, where oh, they're sitting and, at the and, and at the end of season uh, season yeah. two, two. Uh, yes. where so we have two occasions of mm-hmm. that where he reaches for her hand, but, but in but while well, she reached for his in because yeah. he put it on it on his knee and she reached over and took it in season two. And so, I mean, both of those, though, were, I believe, legitimately trying to comfort and receive comfort and all of that. I mean, like, I I don't think Red, I mean, I think Red was playing her in a lot of ways in season one, including in the Gina Zanatakos episode, tremendously mm-hmm. playing her on many things. But I, I don't think in that moment when he reached out and took her hand, he was trying to hurt her in any way. I think he oh, was no. trying to comfort her. And, and I think that he, she was too, even yeah. before, he says, before everything changes. Yeah. And before everything changed. Uh, I don't know. I think that 
it at the end of 601, I think that it was more of a, this is what we do. This is a show of a sign of comfort. And so I'm going to do this. And I mean, it might have been kind of a saying goodbye to what they had. I mean, that's possible, especially, you know, now that I'm thinking about it. I mean, especially with her second thoughts that she had in 602. And so, but it was an interesting move and it was, uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes. It's, um, yeah, definitely this is, um, here's the question, um, because I've bounced around on this and I talked about it some on Tumblr and I, I've kind of swayed back around to it. Um, do you think the reason that the girls had him arrested was to buy them time to get information from, you know, the records that were going to be created with his arrest or that they are legitimately trying to get him put on death row? Or do you think there's a different goal for each one? And that Liz thought, because I mean, Liz did seem to me at least genuinely upset with the idea that he might die. Like when she yes. realized he I wasn't getting out. Yeah. I, I think that they have thought that here is a guy who's an international criminal, who's also a former U S Navy officer who's wanted for treason. He is not going to go into a federal prison. He's going to go into, he's going to be arrested and immediately the CIA or the U.S. Uh, um, Navy is going to come and grab him and because treason takes precedence from anything else. So he's, he would be basically a missing in action officer, and now you have crime, so uh, the U.S. Navy will take over. And I think that, that they haven't thought about it. I mean, I, I think that to an extent Liz thought that Cooper would be able to get him out, that she didn't think this was a permanent solution and she also I don't believe thought that he would immediately fixate on the person that did it and think it was somebody close because while I do well he just he said when he find out mm -hmm. when they were planning it and they were talking about it she says not not if but just when so I, I think that, that Liz thought to stop him. I mean, this is a different situation than when he had him arrested. And again, too, at that point, she knew that he was going to go into a deep hole. And, you know, like Cooper said, he's going to go into a deep hole and be interrogated and all that. I think that probably Liz thought that his immunity agreement will, will hold. But the whole thing is by using the NYPD and having a a um, prosecutor that is not going to let go of him uh, definitely makes uh, was not something they had on, they had planned. Yeah, I think Holt's the wild card here, and so she she's the one that blew the the pieces out of the water for him. <laughs> um, yeah. And Panna Baker was very clear. You know, she was very clear before in season four when she said, "Yeah, this is out of my thing. You knew what we were doing here." Uh, and this time was the same thing. It's like, yeah, yeah, you know, all of that don't involve me. And, you know, nice, uh, nice work, by the way. Yeah, I, I love what was that comment and milking the crazy cow or something like mm -hmm. that. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh, Panna Baker. She uses some of these strangest, strangest phrasings. <laughs> so I think I think that that uh, then. Um, Cooper is is panicking. Uh, that was my idea. That Cooper has. I mean, the options that Cooper has left are not palatable, and I think that he's going to have to to try to to finagle him out of there. Uh, but it's not going to be easy because to do that, he has to expose whatever uh, Red is doing. You know that I always thought that when Cooper was placed in the FBI, it was with the intention that eventually he will be as a assistant. Mm -hmm. So I think that at this time, Cooper is like, well, you know, I have, I have my orders. I don't know if I can, you know, what can I do with a compromising thing? So it, it, Red doesn't seem preoccupied to be in, in jail. Oh, no, I don't think he's worried about it. I think he must have some sort of plan to get out. I mean, because that's, that's what he told Holt. He said, you know, yes, winning is fun. He just, I, I don't think it was all just bravado. I think that he has various contingencies oh, yeah. in place. That but he didn't seem happy getting out of that thing into that decrepit prison. No, <laughs> no. I mean, 
But if you were Raymond Reddington, would you or anybody, honestly? <laughs> yeah. Now let me let me put something that I that I just for for the people that, that like the theories. Do you remember that we always said, what is it about Boston? First Tom wanted to go to uh, to to Nebraska and then he wanted to go to Boston and and he's like no we, you can't go to Boston and everybody's like why can't he protect it in Boston you know whose Bos- whose territory was Boston hmm. Baldur Magnuson ooh so it's it's literally out of his realm of being able to protect interesting yeah yeah and I just got that because I was rewatching the, that beautiful scene and I got that and it's just Boston and it's like oh Look at that. That's why. So Which is funny because James is from Boston. <laughs> so, so it's fun when you, when you find out these little tidbits that kind of give you like, yes, there is a very cohesive plan um, about all this. Um, awesome. What else do you got on Liz and Red? I mean, do you I, have an idea that Red think is her? I don't. No, I, I don't think that he would... Uh, even if the logical side of his brain might say that, I don't think, I think he would override it immediately. He doesn't want to believe it's her. But definitely, and, that's going to tear the, the, the task force because Liz did this. Mm-hmm. Liz well, I mean, endangered them all. Well, I mean, didn't Liz. Again. I was going to say, Liz also orchestrated the whole escape at the end of season five. If that came out and then this came out, there would be no trusting her ever again. I mean,. That that would just be rough. I I wish that she had brought at least wrestler in on it. You know, I because I I think that Ress might have been willing to work with her on certain things here. Um, I think wrestler has got to the point where he is like, okay, I get it. I was too too uh, boy scouty, but I got my limits here. Well, I'm, I mean, he was saying like, I was going to do his bidding. To me, that was like wrestler is getting tired. Mm-hmm. I definitely think he is. And I mean, because it's just one thing after another and, and people are dropping like flies around them, too. Um, but yeah, it's I, I will be I will be interested to see if she is setting Russ up for a scapegoat. And if so, that how was that, low. That, that would was be s- very low, especially after how mad she was before when Kane set a mm-hmm. wrestler up to kill Hitchens. Mm hmm. And so I, is, I'm hoping that, that maybe that's not what she was trying to do. Maybe she was just trying to deflect, not necessarily set him up, and that she'll back off of that. I, I hope she won't go full scale to that because that, that will be very sad. Because um, that, that, I've been waiting. I, I always loved that friendship in the early series, and... I felt like that episode really brought back some of the finer points that I always enjoyed. Um, and yeah, but I think this is the, um, the, the, you know, when you go in the, in the rides and you go like, tuck, tuck, <laughs> yes. tuck, 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 <laughs> and then you like, like balance yourself. And when Liz said, um, do you did it? I'm like, okay, whoa, we're going down here. And there's the free fall. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's kind of like the, folk. It's it's like the joke they um th- there was a TV show that I used to watch called Once Upon a Time that one of my very favorite characters it was between him and another guy in this love triangle and the rumor was one of them was going to die at the end of the episode and I was like oh well it won't be this guy because you know this and that and there hasn't been enough build up for it and then they literally spent the whole episode like fawning over the character just to kill him at the end he'd barely been there that season and then they fawned over him for an entire episode to kill him at the end it's like here have the nice things remember how much you love this character oh they're gone and so remember how much you love this friendship oh we're destroying it <laughs> you know yeah it's, uh, it's to me it's like tick, tick, tick. yeah no that, that right, roller coaster go. is a perfect yeah. example <laughs> it's yeah. really now, what now it is. you know where you're going I, and i think oh. that there is very little that very little that is going to survive Liz, um, and and I think I mean think about it. I mean I I don't know that there's people that are going to still be thinking that Red is not her father. I, to me, that you know the whole thing just doesn't make any sense otherwise. She is very much the daughter of her parents, and you know it's not an improved version. 
And the one thing that I got to say is, did you think when she sent Red to prison, did you thought about Tom and the boat and the and the and her leveraging for information? I thought, man, I mean, this time she's not putting the the, the shackles and she learned the, the his her lessons. You don't go for the ha- for the shackles yourself. You let somebody else do it. I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. She let someone else put the cuffs on this time. That's <laughs> that's true. That's you know. Now, hey, she's I, learning. I, yeah. <laughs> Can't you want help? Yeah, but how about if you give me some information? Because I need that information to help you. So answer my questions. Make them yep, think that you're on their perfect. side. Yeah, and uh, I think that that was uh, that was brilliant. The, the way I mean, they're bringing all these parallels, and um, <laughs> it's just great. Um, and and that's and that's what what Tom learned and Red didn't. And you know, she told him last season. This is I'm howling at the moon i need answers and red didn't listen and this no it's not it's not just that red didn't listen he mocked her over it yeah yeah and and it just said about um um uh, what i was gonna say i lost my train of thought yeah he he mocked her and he also um you know, she, she, he had told her many times, oh, I'm sure you're going to find the truth. I'm sure you're going to find the truth. And yes, she will, you know, and she's going to destroy whatever she needs to destroy in order to get it. Yeah. It's, he said he would burn the world, burn the world to protect the one he loves the most. Well, she's going to burn the world for the answer Mm -hmm. (laughs) that she wants the most because I mean, life has taken away everything that she loves. And so all she's got left is a rage. And and I found interesting how there is like zero, even she, I doubt that she even remembers about her daughter, you know? And you can see how Red was when he was in his revenge. He probably, for whatever year that he was doing his revenge for Katerina, didn't even think about Liz. And now probably he went back, thought about taking her back and thought that, you know, hey, this is his happy kid. I become this horrible, hideous thing. I can't go back. Yeah, I can't bring that darkness into this child's life. And again, this is going to be a mistake. But I think overall, I mean, you know my theory. I think this is a very ugly divorce in which the parents are using the kids against each other. Um, Carla is telling Jennifer that her father is a danger to her. Um, Red is telling Liz that Katerina died of of weakness and shame. Um, You know, he abandoned basically both girls and they're going to pay because this, they're going to have two angry kids. <laughs> Payback's a bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that about wraps us up. Do you have anything else yep. to add? I do not. I'm excited for the rest of the season. Yeah. I, I, I thought that 601 started a little slow, but by 602, I felt like, you know, I was, I was excited. We'll see how it goes. I, I have one little tidbit. I had thought for a long time, why make Cape May? Why would Katarina go to Cape May of all places that she had along the East Coast? I mean, it's the East Coast. There is there is plenty of places to walk in the ocean, right? I mean, you can pick and choose whatever, you know, beeline you have in front of you and going to find a beach. Why Cape May? And this episode gave me the answer. Because between Cape May and the beach, which I cannot pronounce for my life, um, the, it's a very short time. And I thought, well, you're going you're gonna to fake your death. Because if you're going to really kill yourself, blow your brains in, in, a, in a public plaza and that would be fine. Or, you know, get poison or something like that. Uh, kill yourself. Leave a vein. body. Yeah, leave a body that, that actually protects your child. But if I were to fake a death... I would, you know, either with a confederate or not, I will get a little boat. I would leave a moor because in the night you can't see much into the sea. I will wear a wetsuit under my t- my, um, t- my shirt with has long sleeves and the whole thing. And I will fold my things, make sure that I have a witness, and then walk into the ocean, take the clothes off, carry them with me, go to the boat, and go across the shortest the shortest point that I'm far away from that place. And that is that beach goes straight through. It's about half an hour and by boat. And that answered to me a huge thing. Katrina did it because Katrina knew the place. 
And I'm not even sure that that fire is actually the fire, but maybe it's a different fire set to confuse things. Because that was not at the house that they, or even a similar house of what they had in Requiem. So that's my little tidbit for. All right. Well, you can catch us on YouTube, iTunes, and SoundCloud. And if you'd like to drop us a comment, which we always love, we love talking to you guys. We are on Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook. And All right. We'll see, you ne- we'll see you next week. Yep. Bye-bye.